Hey guys, it's Scott from Pressing Matters. Uh, I just got a delivery today of something I want to cover. Um, I know I don't cover very many rock uh, music titles or classic rock, so I decided to do one um, with one of my favorite albums from the past. Uh, this is an album I grew up with, and one of my favorite from this band. Aerosmith, Get Your Wings. This is the uh, edition mastered by Ryan Smith. Um, pressed at RTI. I'm looking forward to hearing that. And it'll be interesting because I have a comparison. I have a nice clean original, a nice clean original pressing. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get down and do a shootout. And I have no idea what it's going to turn out to be, but we'll see. Okay, welcome back um, to the Pressing Matters. This is Scott. And uh, boy, the last couple days I've been banging it away with Aerosmith. And um, I've been exploring the 2013 reissue of Get Your Wings with an original or close to original pressing that I have. Actually, it's a little bit later. It's uh, the PC um, catalog number instead of KC. So it was later on. Um, I think it was probably during the nice price um, era where they were reissuing stuff at a low price. And um, I believe it has 1K stampers. If I made a note of it. Um, at any rate, uh, so yeah, I've been banging away and this has bought, brought back a lot of memories for me, uh, because this band was on my radar when I was probably 13 or so, and they're from my area of the woods, um, in New Hampshire. And I actually recall seeing them in Manchester, um, at JFK Coliseum. It was a skating rink, hockey rink. And um, yeah, it was like probably their first tour or maybe this one, probably the first one, right before they broke big with Dream On from the first album. And they were raw and they were bluesy and they were incredible. And Steve uh, Tyler was very charismatic um, you could tell right away they were going to make it big, and they did, they did. But, um, personally, today's Aerosmith holds nothing to the earlier Aerosmith. To me, the sweet spot is uh, the first album, but more importantly, this one, Get Your Wings, uh, Toys in the Attics and Rocks. Those are the trifecta. Those are the albums that made them famous. And to me, those are the albums that um, show them at their finest before they got a little bit too much of a caricature of themselves. Um, especially Get Your Wings. Um, the debut hat was raw and rockin', but um, the second album, to me, has a, has a, how do I explain it, um, sort of like gone off the rails feeling. Um, it just lets loose in all good ways. Um, the, the vocal style of uh, Steve Tyler got really really good, uh, really um, came into its own. Um, and the tracks rock completely heavy and almost sinister um, throughout this album. There's none of the cutesy stuff that they did later here and there um, that I didn't like. This was serious balls to the wall rock. And uh, it held up really well. I really, really enjoyed listening to both versions. Um, I made a few notes throughout the listening, but the main thing that hit me was 
the swagger, <laughs> the swagger this band has. It's like they just the the bass line, the rhythm is in, incredible. It's powerful, especially on tracks like Train Kept a Rolling. It feels like it's rolling right over you. It's heavy, heavy, heavy. And um, so the I listened to the original first, or the close to original, and uh, it was everything I remembered it to be. Um, really heavy really crisp, really ballsy, and um, a little murky in, in spots. That's part of its charm, I think. Um, you know, the engineering is not, it's not an audiophile album by any means, but it's, um, it's very effective in what it's trying to do. And um, the reissue is, is very, very close. It's very close. I mean, Ryan K. Smith did the reissue and he um, did that at Sterling. It was pressed at RTI. So it has a little bit of audiophile cred, but, uh, and it was done for Record Store Day in 2013. So this is a little late in coming, but um, I did want to cover it because it is an important album in my history. Um, so when I put on the second one, the newer one, I found that uh, it's almost indistinguishable from the first pressing, the original pressing. The way it differs is the first pressing is a touch brighter, a touch more in your face. And the second one, the newer one, the it's a little more rounded presentation. It hasn't lost its edge, but it's a little more refined. It's a little more cleaned up um, in a way. Not in a bad way, though. Not in a bad way at all. It actually removes a, a little bit of that harsh um, treble that plagues the, the original pressing. So it has all the sonic thrills of the first album, of the first pressing, and it loses really nothing um, nothing important to the first one. As a matter of fact, I could live easily with either one, and I almost might prefer the new one, um, but it's really a toss-up from in-your-face to a little bit more polished presentation. How do you like your Aerosmith? I mean, you probably like it raw and unpolished, so many people will probably prefer the first pressing if they're really comparing it closely, but if you've never heard the first pressing, I don't think you could even tell the difference. You know, it's um, it's got everything that made this record powerful and impressive. And it just takes a little bit of the edge out of the out of the treble. And in a way, that's a good thing. Um, I, I really like it very much. Uh, there was I made a few notes of some of the sonic highlights here. Um, at the end of Same Old Song and Dance, there's a, like a feedback and kind of a bass uh, fade out. And it is super loud and shakes the walls. And it does it on either pressing. Um, the menacing quality that I was talking about early earlier that you know kind of abandoned and just kind of almost creepy baseline is very apparent in uh, Lord of the Thighs. Um, what else did I write here? Uh, I love that there like I said there was nothing cutesy on it or caricature like that they kind of took on in the later albums. It's all very, very serious, scary, um, uh, threatening kind of sound. Um, very raw. Um, let's see. Oh, the the beginning of spaced um, comes in with like a. I think it's a backward symbol, kind of like, and you hear uh, a scream out of Steven Tyler. 
And that is done very effectively on the new one too. It makes you jump out of your seat. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout, almost throughout the record, the drums are really prominent. Symbol is very clear. Um, the drums really drive this album and the bass is tight and uh, propulsive all the way through. Um, there's another sonic highlight that I really like. It's um, when he sings, uh, let's see, which song is it? Spaced. In Spaced, he says, um, and I'm never, never, never going back. I'm off the tracks. There's the bass in that section dips down so low, it's shocking. It really is shocking, and it happens on both pressings. A really, a really effective um, moment in the record. Um, let's see, what else? <clears throat> oh yeah, well, Train Kept It Rolling sounds like a train is running over you. It's like bone crushing, powerful. Really, really good all the way through. I mean, really, this, this record is an essential. Um, to me, the three records are essential. I love this record. I think it's a sweet spot. The earlier one has its charms, but it's still kind of working out where they were going. And Toys in the Attic, for some reason, that's a fan favorite and it's supposed to sound better. Maybe I need to get the record store day pressing because I have a Simply Vinyl pressing that I picked up way long ago and it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. Um, and this record really, that record really never did it for me. Um, for some reason, I don't think the compositions are, are as good as what they are on, on the second album. Rocks, on the other hand, is a return to form. Rocks was really good, all killer throughout the record. But it did start to have that little bit of a um, playful, kind of a character caricature is the only thing I can think of, uh, where they kind of became a caric caricature of themselves. Um, Maybe it's a little more fun, but it's not, it doesn't have that sinister vibe that the second album has. So that's kind of my take on, on the Record Store Day version of Get Your Wings. I think if you don't have the album and you need to find a clean pressing, there's a no-brainer, get it, because it sounds almost identical to the, to the original pressings. And if you have a clean first pressing, which is not likely because these things were played to death, um, you're all set, you know, but either way, you got to have this record in your collection. It's a rock classic and it's Aerosmith in top form. So thank you for uh, listening to this little rock review. Um, I sometimes get accused by my partner of not covering rock music. So I wanted to grab this one, even though it's an older release, it's still available and it's available for like under $20. So it's a great way to, um, build your, uh, rock collection. If you don't have any Aerosmith, I suggest it as the first album you get. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing the videos and stay tuned for more good content. Thank you.